Okay, now, last year was a difficult year for the royal family, and 2023 looks like it's already off to a rocky start. Yeah. Prince Harry is preparing to make a more bombshell revelations this Sunday in an interview with ITV News. It never needed to be this way. The leaking and the planting. I want a family, not an institution. They feel as though it's better to keep us somehow as the villains. They've shown absolutely no willingness to reconcile. I would like to get my father back. I would like to have my brother back. That's Harry the Interview, which airs on ITV1 and ITVX at 9pm this Sunday. Yeah, and we're joined now by our royal editor, editor Camilla Tomine. Now, Camilla, you know, it's, it's turned into, you know, a, a, a sort of a, a Harry versus is William, I think. Yes. And, and to me, as an outsider, I think it is really sad. I mean, this is a family that totally feels betrayed by one another. Yes. So what do you think that we can expect from this sit-down interview? Because do you think it's going a bit too far or...? I don't know. I suppose we expect more of the same, don't we? It's kind of surprising that there's more left to say after a six-part Netflix documentary series. Did you watch it? Yes. One and two. Yeah. That's all, episodes one and two. I mean, lots of people have watched it. I think 85 million viewers. Yeah, it's the most where... watched. The couple kind of completely lay bare all of their complaints, not just about the family, but about the media, life in general, while kind of painting this picture of their own ideal over in Montecito. And you look at this, I can get it because he's got an autobiography to promote and he was paid $20 million for it. And therefore, of course, you've got to have accompanying interviews. Yeah. So he's doing this one with Tom Bradbury of this great uh, station. And then he's doing another one with Anderson Cooper in the US. And he might also do a newspaper interview still to be confirmed. All in the US book, or UK. And it's all about the book. But I suppose after Netflix, you're thinking, well, what more is there left to say? And so these promos seem to be saying the same as they've already been saying, which is they've been let down by the family, that there's this rift that we know about, obviously, between him and William and him and Charles. There were some suggestions in the Sunday Times at the weekend that the book goes easier on Charles than it does on William, even Kate's the subject of a bit of a broadside. And then, as you say, Josie, it seems that this massive row that's kind of encompassed the entire royal scene since 2020 when they left the family is slowly being whittled down to this kind of brotherly spat. Yeah. And that's the saddest thing about yeah. it because, of course, we've always known William and Harry since their mother's death to be brothers in arms. And I think people watching this look at it and think to themselves, I wonder what Diana would make of her sons being at war with each other. Got all of these claims from Harry as well about kind of planting and leaking this idea that journalists like me just get <laughs> stories handed to us on a plate well, by the I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a question. Yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah. sorry. Because you are... You, you broke the Harry and Meghan story. Yeah. Did someone from the palace phone you up and go, Camilla, I've got this story, do you want to run it? No. How does that work? Because... Do you know what about that story, which is interesting, Andy? I never even ran that story by the palace because I was so confident in the information I had. I didn't want it to leak. OK, where did you get it? Where... I, I'm not telling you that. You can't name your source. But you say <laughs> no. you're very confident. You know, I always watch Chris, well, he... I always I watch Chris Shipp on this channel and he always says, I spoke to somebody at the palace. And I want to go, who? But say if we speak to people... So, so say Netflix lands, yeah. then we we'll might phone the palace and say, look, the couple have said X, Y and Z. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? The irony here is, is that the palace have had no reaction to any of it. But so, so they say nothing to you. No, phone them. They've they said, go, we got said, do you want to say. give us any guidance? Right. And I think there's been a few people that have said things like they're really disappointed, they're upset, they feel that you know they're airing their lorty, dirty linen in public, and it's not conducive to kind of repairing the relationships. But it's funny that Harry's talking about all of this leaking and briefing, and actually. I mean, has the palace said anything about any of this? Well, what ha has anyone said... come on anyone's sofa and given their side of the story? Weirdly, the papers have kind of been looking at it and analysing it and seeing it as the readers see it, which is a bit of kind of, OK, this is getting awkward now, enough yes. already, right. yeah. maybe. Regardless of which side, you can be on both sides. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Or you can be on Meghan and Harry's side and still think, OK, enough now, you've said all you need to say. You can be on the royal side and say, oh, I don't want to hear from them ever again. Sometimes I get readers saying, you know, why are you still writing about them? We don't care. And yet people do care because we're speaking about it. So they're generating, at the moment, their own publicity. If it weren't for Netflix and the book, we wouldn't really be writing about them at all, I don't think. I, I think they're both lovely, lovely boys that we've grown up to watch. And I would like them all to just forget everything, Get in a room together uh, for 24 hours and just sort it all out and become family again. And I'll tell you what, those, the, the women, like Megan and Kate, they must really love them.
because they're, from what I can see, your whole freedom gets stripped away. This is, it's, it's scary what they've done. But they've... Although you could say that the Sussexes now have all of the freedom in the world. They could be saying, OK, because they keep on saying this was never about privacy. So if it's about the freedom to say what they like, that's absolutely fine. Yep. And, I, you know, if they want to say that, that's good for me. It's good for business. Yep. I've got stuff to write. Yep. I can come on the sofa and talk about it. But all I would say is this, you know, with the freedom to say what you like comes responsibility. You have to take responsibility for what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If you're going to launch a diatribe against your own family, sort of in different mediums, be it on Netflix or in a book or in interviews with Tom Bradbury or others, then... I would humbly suggest, and I'm no expert on relationships, we need Deirdre on for this, but I would humbly suggest that's not going to help repair your relations with your relatives. Oh, I really hope yeah. they do. I really, really hope they do. It's a world you live in, and as you say, we report on it, we talk about it, but you live it, you know the people that you can phone and say, what do you think? You're right, everyone has an opinion to voice their opinion. Everyone has a reason, sorry, to voice their opinion. Harry and Meghan have done theirs. Why don't the palace say anything? Because, because are we not getting to the stage now where it is going to look a little bit one-sided? Because people can make their own minds up, first of all. And second of all, I kind of get the impression that that old never complain, never explain yeah. mantra, it has kind right. of served the institution well. The institution's popularity isn't suffering. Harry and Meghan's popularity is, it is really? suffering. Okay. So the latest YouGov poll suggests that nearly half the British public, 44% of people, think Harry should be stripped of his title. Now, that's a debate for another day. So, isn't it a case that the, the more pa reasonable the palace seems, the more unreasonable the couple seem if but they could keep that be on attacking them? But could that be a tactic by the palace? But what are they to do? Like, you, unfortunately, we'd love to see it, right? But you're not going to get the Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Kate, on this sofa, never chatting about never. this stuff. To be fair, Andy, agree with you. Yeah. Let's hold out hope for that. But what I mean is they might come on and they'll talk about Earthshot or a charitable yeah. endeavour. They're not going to start pouring out their souls about family matters to the likes of you or I or Oprah or anyone. The king and the queen consort aren't going to do that. So there is a one-sided nature to this. So if friends of the royals do brief back and say, well, recollections may vary or, oh, William doesn't see it that way, you'll get that. But I think it's been interesting that... Harry's whole shtick here is they're constantly planting and leaking. Actually, we haven't heard that much from the palace since Netflix, land Netflix landed. Very quickly, Meghan is rumoured to have a book deal. Do you think it's true? Well, Harry is being paid $20 million for four books. Does that mean that they want a book from Meghan as well? And if I were a publisher, I'd take a book from Meghan, wouldn't you? At this rate, I would. If I were a publisher, <laughs> I mean, why not? I'd take a book from her. Why not? Wow. Are, are they doing this because they need to pay for their security? Well, they have to pay for their security anyway, which apparently is hundreds of thousands of dollars because they need a lot of security in Montecito. But then they weren't short of a few bob before all of this because Harry inherited mother, uh, money from his mother and the Queen Mother and Meghan was doing all right and they both got quite a few millions in the bank anyway. But I guess if you're going to be offered money, huge amounts of money by Netflix and Spotify and others because you want to be financially independent in America, then you're going to take it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Look, oh. the story's going to run and run. Yeah. Uh, the interview, as we said, is later on this week here on ITV1. Uh, Sunday at 9pm. And, of course, I'm pretty sure that ITV bosses are going to buy the Anderson Cooper one as well and run that. Because yeah, actually, that will be aired in the UK too. Yeah, but that will of course be, yeah. it's going to be around midnight our time on Sunday that yeah. we hear that one. Right, OK. Thank you, Camilla. We hope they saw it all out. We love them both, you know. We so. wish both sides well. Yeah, we wish both sides very well. Um,